All right, greetings. Hey, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. And uh, I uh, realized this morning it's been two weeks since I've made a video. And that's because it's summer and it gets busy in the summer, even though we say we're not going to be busy anymore. But here I am in the, the grow zone or our grow area. And the last time I showed you this was exactly two weeks ago. And it was some pretty tall um, fodder radishes in here. And I put these pigs in on them. There's 13 of them here now. I just made a final count. And this is what it looks like now. So they've done a pretty good job of taking it down. But what we're actually looking at here is all the tops are gone. So they ate those first, right? And now is the tedious part is when they start getting hungry and then they start to dig because I want them to get all the roots out of here, right? And I want them to turn this all up. So today is my day. I start cutting hay today. And so this is how things will work. Here's the field that's next to it. It was field peas. And I told you that they didn't really go very well. You can look at the, the difference down this fence line. One side they've taken everything off and then this side they haven't been on yet. And I, I didn't think these field peas were doing very good. But come to find out, they, let's see if I can grab some. They did come in pretty well. So this is what I'm looking at right now. I'm looking at just, just uh, you know, the flowers are dying off and the pea pods are in place. And it looks like it would be a pretty good harvest here if we were gonna go through and harvest this, but we're not. I'm gonna turn them in on it, but not today, <laughs> because I want them to do the digging that they need to do in there. So when you're doing planning, what you're looking at is, okay, I've got, I had two weeks of feed on here, right? Two weeks, I got two weeks out of that, 100 by 100, uh, 14 days, okay. Did pretty well. I did supplement their feed a little bit. I gave them junk bread. And I am planning to get at least that out of this. So I did all my preparation work. Um, I've got to change the oil in the tractor yet today. And then I'll be cutting hay for as long as it takes me to get all the fields cleared off and stored in the barn. And if that's as far as I got for the summer, I would be very happy with that. But that's not it. We still have all the gardens to take care of. And then I've, I'm have i prepared for, I, I figure I'll be another week on that field before they start digging. Once they start digging and they start liking those those radishes, they'll go right through it. <clears throat> and then I think that I'm going to have at least three weeks on this field here, on the pea field. I think I'll have at least three weeks on that. And by that time, this field should be coming in. And this will be where they wind up in about another three weeks. Now, it's I just planted it yesterday. Right? It doesn't look like much, but we're supposed to get a little bit of rain. The soil was nice when I planted it, so I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to get good germination there. And I planted it with the same radishes that I planted up there. And by the time they're on here for a day, on the pea field for a day, I should have that field that they're on right now prepared and planted again. And then, of course, when I move them into this field, I'm doing the same thing here. By the time I get ready to move them back down there, we're getting a little cooler in the season. 
Which brings me to something that I've wanted to talk about for a long time, I've known about for a long time. And I think folks should go and do a little bit of research on this. In the homesteader community, we kind of know about this, but <clears throat> I don't think the rest of the world has, has heard about it too much, but it's called solar minimums. And this is, this is what we're supposed to be going into is what's called a grand solar minimum. And this is where we're gonna have a little bit longer winters and they're gonna get continually longer and longer and longer. And the climate is <clears throat> going to be cooler from for the rest of what would be our lives. So we're gonna have to learn how to do things in a shorter season and things that required really hot nights and hot days are not gonna work as well. <clears throat> to the point where they're not going to work at all. But what does work is things like this, field peas, they work really well. The root crops do really well. Grass always does pretty well. But we have to learn how to utilize it. You know, what animals can turn that into uh, the protein and the fats that we need. So I think it's just something to think about. I mean, if you need milk, you can, you can grass feed your animals uh, that you're going to milk. We do have for a long time. Same thing with beef. It can all be grass fed. And you can get a lot of mileage, as I'm showing you here, with this type of forage type planting. Now, would this work for a commercial operation, you know, where you're going to raise, you know, a thousand pigs a year? It could. It could on the property that I have here now. No, it wouldn't. I think that it's probably a better idea at this time, just my gut feeling, a lot of it's just gut feeling, to be diversified. So if all of our processes are hindered by cooler temperatures and more water, a lot more rain, and our groundwater is way up. <clears throat> we need to d diversify into a bunch of different things. And this is this is homesteader advice. This isn't for the commercial guys. You know that you should be, if you're planting 10,000 acres of soy, and you're underwater this year, you probably ought to think about something else. I don't know what to tell you, um, but I, I do know that a lot of the croppage this year in the United States did not get planted. Even around here, it's it's kind of startling how much is still not planted and then how much uh, it just got planted recently. I don't know how it will do. I mean, these are professional farmers. They know what they're doing, I guess, but I've, we've not seen this. And then when we talk to some of our professional farmer friends, they say they've not seen it in their lifetimes either. So who knows what's going to happen. Um, but, you know, on this channel, a lot of times we talk about homesteading and prepping and I don't know, just life skills. I think it's a good idea to start thinking about a little bit of food production, your own food production, and uh, do it with cooler temperatures in mind. For a while there, we thought it was going to be hotter temperatures in mind, and that would mean that, well, you know, let's plant everything into corn because we do really well with corn in hot temperatures, but in cool temperatures, not so much, not so much because things don't dry out enough to get the corn in. And then if it starts raining in at harvest time, then we have problems then too. So uh, this is a good technique. Uh, I did not harvest that field over there. It, they've been on there for two weeks, they've been fed, and I didn't have to do anything, right? They did the harvest themselves. And it will be the same thing on this. All I have to do is open and close gates and move them onto this. And then I can, you know, go about the other things that I have to do. I don't have to be too worried about writing fat checks to the feed company to come in and drop feed. And you don't want that because that's coming off your bottom line and it just makes it so it doesn't really work out, you know. I mean, it has to pencil out on the bottom, your bottom line, those pigs have to be worth more than what I have into them, or this is not working, you know. All right, 
Well, I, I apologize. I don't have my smooth anymore. It needs to be repaired or replaced. I haven't got around to that yet. I'm busy with other things. But uh, so that's why I'm just using my my arm to hold this up and it gets a little shaky, especially if I had, had three cups of coffee, which I did this morning. All right, it's Mark Baker's Green Acres. Remember, anyone can find